there now today's woman we are going to be taking notes on cashing in on your personal pleasures my name is priscilla regina naloga alongside chrissy genye but more so our guest in studio is a very intriguing lady she is a banker by profession but she's also a travelpreneur she loves to travel and she's making money doing that and she's an entrepreneur a financial advisor motivational speaker but more so a financial coach ladies and gentlemen we are seated in the midst of philippa biama good morning to you madame philippa good morning to you how are you fine thank you how are you very good i think we should add fashionista to the list ah, yeah fashionista. fashionista thank you ah, okay all right uh, where do we start from tell us about philippa and exactly what you do Thank you very much. Uh, Philippa is my name. I'm a banker by profession. I've been working in the bank for the last, uh, for more than uh, uh, 15 years. Uh, so that's the kind of banking Ooh. experience that I have with mm. me. Um, I'm also a travelpreneur. I'm a businesswoman. I am a mentor and coach to many. Uh, I'm also a member of uh, Kampala Toastmasters, which is a subsidiary of Toastmasters International. Uh, that is into uh, public speaking and leadership uh, mm -hmm. skills. Let uh, me cut you short right there how do i join the toastmasters and make some money out of uh, my you're, you're joining to toastmasters to make money <laughs> not to address me things. i'll be very honest with you every endeavor i undertake must have a monetary value to it that is being intentional yeah you know i do not like people second guessing me about what i want when i want it and how i want it so philippa to answer chris's question mm -hmm. Very good. I'll be taking you through how you get to join Toastmasters. All right, no doubt. Yes. Later on. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, Philippa Biama in that capacity, but mm. she has a very interesting story. How she became an entrepreneur. Um, her husband used to oversend her for popcorn. Yeah. So from Ooh. work, they used to stay in Bokoto, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So husband, darling, sweetheart, please bring me popcorn. So. <laughs> <laughs> she hated her husband <laughs> sending her for popcorn because at one point she had to drive all the way to Ntinda to be able to access popcorn to bring back for Muami. You know, fresh love. You, you do what you can do, even if it's killing you inside. But what was killing her actually turned out to be a business venture. Tell us about this story. Yes, yeah, very, uh, very interesting. So, uh, you know, we've got to learn how to pick uh, business, uh, business ideas from mm. different, in different ways, from our passions, from our talents, um, and uh, you know, you, you from our problems, background. and then yes, from our problems because we need to be solving problems mm -hmm. in the community. Sure. So this particular problem wasn't in the community at large, but in our house. <laughs> yes. So yeah. my husband loves popcorn, and I definitely wanted to make him happy. So wow. uh, you know, having to drive to Ntinda because the nearest supermarket then mm. uh, didn't have a fresh popcorn machine, and I didn't want to buy you know the packed one. Yeah. So um, you know that was Nakumat then before it left. So uh, I, I just I was like, why don't why don't these people have a fresh popcorn machine. So I had to always drive to look for fresh popcorn. So uh, that forced me to just walk to the management and ask them, what does it take, you know, to put a popcorn machine here? And uh, like they said, the rest is history. I got a popcorn machine there. They told me to put in my proposal. I got a popcorn machine there. And uh, because they had other branches elsewhere, I started, uh, you know, supplying the other branches and, as well. And of course, because, you know, it was in Kenya, I also started doing packed popcorn mm. all the way to wow. Kenya. And the one who refused to buy packed popcorn in Uganda. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow. So I spread my product went all the way up to Kenya. And yeah. of course, I went to also other supermarkets. And uh, that led, of course, to the birth of uh, uh, supplying uh, packed uh, you know, snacks mm. in other supermarkets as well. Mm. Which other so, snacks did you then venture into? Um, so I started with what we call, uh, uh, there's something similar to the Gorillo uh, line, mm -hmm. yeah, and then, uh, um, and then uh, of course, those popcorns, but in depth, in various um, flavors, uh, flavors. spices. So, yes, mm. I had the, uh, the, the, the chocolate popcorn, the I had chocolate the, popcorn is yes, amazing. I had the you caramel ones, out, yeah. I had the chili, and uh, those have gone into other supermarkets as well. Even <laughs> after the closure of Nakumat. Okay, all right. And that's how <laughs> she became an entrepreneur, Chris. Wow, interesting story there. But of course, uh, many stories of people getting into entrepreneurship are really never linear. There's always a way, depending on uh, the circumstances you speak about, a, uh, a love for popcorn by your husband, uh, so much so that you're able to capitalize on that. During that particular time, what were the constraints to uh, starting out away from the fact that you had to get a machine and then uh, get around the market and of course being a supermarket people would come on whoever sees can buy but what was the greater uh, 
issue? What were the circumstances that perhaps helped you to, you know, go through the process, find what you need in terms of uh, getting the business up? Because it's a big problem for some of uh, the young girls out there. Yeah. Um, thank you. So uh, one of the things that I started early in uh, my career was mm. saving. Ah. And I want to encourage saving. everyone to always save. Save at least 20% of your salary. Such that when a business idea comes, you're not starting from scratch. You're not trying to go to a money lender to borrow 100% of the capital that you need. So start by saving something from your salary. Mm -hmm. So when you're starting, to, you may not have a business idea. You may not know what you want to do. I've met people who say they don't have a business acumen, mm. you know, but you can always save. And there are so many things you can do. Like I said, so many ideas. And one of the things is even leveraging on the power of numbers, leveraging on the power of people. Mm. And, uh, you know, if you, don't, if you feel you're not a business person, you can actually save and then you start putting uh, money together in an investment club mm. and you use other people's ideas to grow, you know, to have a side income coming in from uh, an investment club. So for me, one of the things that helped me was the fact that I started saving early. Mm. Yeah, I always had at least a minimum of 20% put aside. Every so when month. Every single month. Wow. So when um, this idea came up of this business, it was easy to, st to have uh, starting capital to work with so that you're not using borrowed funds, especially mm. with a new idea that you haven't ventured into. Okay. But uh, I also had to read a little bit uh, more about uh, popcorn, uh, what are the dynamics, uh, what's the best type, uh, what kind of oil should you use, um, what wow. is the hygiene around there. Mm. So there was a lot of uh, self-studying that I had to do and uh, that helped me to be able to uh, sustain and uh, actually grow uh, that business from just the fresh popcorn machine. Mm that was uh, you know, going to help us with that daily uh, you know, popcorn supply. Just to you, Sub, ask, for those that are not salary earners, how do you then deal with the subject of saving in percentages? Um, so if you're not a salary earner, you're into a business. For every proceed you receive, for all, any income you receive from your business, have percentages that you're working with. Uh, you know, so still subject whatever amount you've been paid to that same rule. Okay. If, if you're paying tithe, you're doing your 10%, 20% to savings. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, then uh, I usually advise about 60% for other expenses. I'm telling you, if you do not save, the, on, the money that you save is the money that you have. If you're spending everything that you have, trust me, it's like you're working. It's like your account. Uh, you know, it's a transfer, it's like you're an agent, a transfer agent <laughs> to other people. <laughs> your money comes into your account and, and then, then you you're paying the landlord, you're paying who, you're paying the electricity, yeah. you're saying nothing for yourself. So make sure you have that rule of what percentages and how you get. So we have uh, a balance of 10% here. What do we do with the 10%? 10% can also, can be, can also uh, depending on how your, 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 your expenses are, mm. yeah, we usually say 60%, but some go up to uh, 70%. But at least your mi bare minimum, if you're able to live within 60%, you can add that 10% into your savings as well. Then, Philippa, how does one enjoy their car money? Because <laughs> you're the very same financial <laughs> advisors who say you must you enjoy your money, money for you to be able to give back into your businesses your business. and your ventures. So that 60% we've talked about under the expenses is where you get to enjoy your kamane, yeah? So have a budget, and budgeting is very important. Mm. And one of the businesses that I run is a training company called uh, Asenify Uganda, where we offer financial uh, management and uh, uh, literacy classes. So we get to teach some of these things, and we are very practical, and we break down how you're able to achieve some of these things. Because it's actually information that people have heard about, but applying it is very hard. Mm. So we get to help them in terms of applying it. So, um, you know, budgeting is very, very key. So you get to budget and know your expenses mm -hmm. and also break those uh, down. You should have, uh, you know, different categories for what you're spending mm. on. Yeah, you should have different limits. Yeah, so if, you're ex if they're expenses, you shouldn't be spending, say, for example, now contributing for weddings. You know, it has 60% percent going uh, to uh, uh, weddings. You should have a limit. In setting. You know, so that 60%, you're mm. saying maybe, uh, you know, 20% of that budget. There. Look at Chris again. In his capacity, <laughs> he cannot put 50,000 shillings to a wedding contribution. First of all, he works with NTV. <laughs> then his structure does not permit him little money to contribute. How does he fudge such a thing? 
Why are you trying to say? You, you, you're going no, to mislead no, them. You know, you know why I'm saying people. that? Because people have that pressure of, mm -hmm. because of the relationship mm. that I have with the people getting married. Uh -huh. I'm expected to have a certain amount of money to contribute. Mm -hmm. And yet you are really talking, especially in the post-COVID-19 era. Yeah, sure. I think, personally, uh, this is a question, of course, uh, for her, but you will have to advise us on that. I don't uh, like contributing overly to a wedding. I believe a person must be able to first put their money aside and simply tell us, come and help me plan, not come and help me <laughs> bring this woman to my place, you know, something like that. But you, of course, you know better how to advise us on that. Well, we are in the African uh, culture, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, Ugandans, we, we help each other, you know, when it comes to this, some of these uh, functions. But you should have a limit, you mm -hmm. should have a plan as to mm -hmm. how you do it. If you become the go-to person for mm -hmm. all your friends who are in financial need, uh, trust me, at the end of the month, you'll have nothing left in it. Okay. Oh, yeah, so you need to good. plan that. Mm. If uh, your 60% of your budget, for example, is, uh, is equivalent to one million, mm. again, you should say, of oh, that one million, how much am I going to give out towards weddings? Okay. So, yeah, but I can assure you, that when the Lord blesses me with the billions that I need in terms of dollars, I shall be able to help anyone. Mm. Uh, you know, some of these things, one thing I've realized is that mm. when you don't have the money, you tend to have a lot of uh, issues around. But when you get the money, everything is thrown out of the... You're like Mike Tyson said, when you enter the ring and you're punched, mm. everything disappears in terms of plan. <laughs> so we shall talk about that uh, perhaps when we get there. You seem to be working on a lot of initiatives. You have the Toastbusters. You have the uh, financial literacy training program. You're a banker. You're an entrepreneur. You're into these businesses. How do you balance these things? Because... Damn, she's a star. Oh. How does that happen? <laughs> um, thank you. So one of the things uh, that I've uh, learned mm. uh, is uh, what I would call personal effectiveness. Ah, sure. Being able Not to achieve down. as much as you can from the little time that you have. Mm. God will never increase the 24 hours we have in a day. Mm. So how are you able to achieve the most out of what you have? Mm. So I've learned the art of personal effectiveness, and by the way, it's one of the things we train in mm. the Senefi. Okay. Uh, Uganda, we, learn to te we, we teach uh, people to learn how to increase is their personal um, effectiveness. Okay, I'll just uh, I interject there. Is that related to the Pareto principle? The yeah. one of 80-20? 80-20 well, uh -huh. rule. How, y yes. rule? How, how it will come in with the 80-20 rule. Mm. If you've got what I, what, I, what I call your your pillars or your big blocks, mm. the most important things in your life. That's right. Yeah. Um, you know, you're going to give that 80% of your time indeed. Yeah. So you come up with what are the things that are your big blocks. Mm -hmm. And then come up with, uh, you know, the smaller goals towards helping to achieve your bigger blocks. And then small, and then you come up with activities that are going to support that plan. Mm. So um, you know that that all ties in uh, in helping you be able to achieve a lot. Uh, but also the other thing that I have learned is uh, you know delegation. Uh -huh, and yeah, before sure. you delegate, you also need to empower. Empower. So in uh, in my in my career, one of the things that I have done is indeed delegating, mm -hmm. but empowering people, training people to be able to do uh, what you're supposed, what you're also able to do, able to so do. that even when you're not there, they are able to, uh, you know, perform to the best mm. of their ability. But prioritizing, yeah, delegation, personal effectiveness, uh, you know, have been very key. Oh. And placing people in the right places, in working the right with the right places. people, mm -hmm. and placing people in the right places, so that you have you know, enablers, divine enablers. Priscilla is itching to say something uh, on uh, a book that you have written. But just before she delves into that, you talk about the fact that uh, there is a tendency, for example, empowerment is uh, a little bit relative. There are people who are trained, but the decisions, to be able to hold the decisions and make them is, a bit, is quite different. And it affects businesses in Uganda, where a company is owned by somebody, <coughs> and then that somebody has a whole plethora of experts doing the job, but the decision making. Now, empowerment must be demystified. How do you really empower people to be able to know that when I make this particular decision regarding this business venture, accountability is on me. And if I'm accountable for that, it means my job or the role and responsibilities that I'm given, I won't be in a, a position where I can lose it because it affects the way people act. Yeah. So how are you empowering people to actually be effective leaders, effective workers? 
Yeah. So, uh, and you've, read, you've actually even hinted already at the answer. If you get to, uh, you know, define, uh, you know, what someone's role is, mm. uh, you know, break down and explain to them what their role is, and then explain to them what kind of decisions they can make within their role. Make uh -huh. it very, very clear. Mm. It has got to be clear. If you leave room for ambiguity, mm. is when, uh, you know, someone acts and is not sure what, they, not should sure what they should so, do. So, uh, you know, you, you, you have to, you've got to be clear in terms of what decisions they can make and what they need to escalate to you. Mm. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right, uh, Philip Abiyama, we continue to have conversations with you. I hope you are taking note, actually, cashing in mm -hmm. on your personal pleasures. So it started with a personal problem in-house, mm -hmm. and today she has traveled, uh, advised people financially uh, over the course of the years. She's also co-founder with Asifa Uganda, which is an online personal financial management skills entity. And the big question is, does everyone need financial literacy skills? Something that she will answer. But she does have a book and it is titled boundless success a life live a life with no limits mm -hmm. that's uh, something that people always ask themselves uh, especially at later stages of life in the yeah. 60s in the evening of life that's when they ask themselves uh, have I really fulfilled everything? Oh, I should have done this. They start having regrets. So, mm -hmm. Philippa here writes about living a life with no limits. But I think chapter three is very captivating. The person you could have been. Mm -hmm. Let's talk wow. about the person you could have been. Um, in Texas, they pride themselves in a quote. Toughness is rule number one in regarding to the person you could have been. So, the person you could have been versus the person you actually have become in regards to boundless success. Yeah, thank you. So, um, Yes, uh, I, I now can say I'm an author, you know, among mm -hmm. my titles, I'm an author. So uh, this book is going to actually be launched on the 22nd of April. And uh, the chief guest is actually Richard Biarugaba. Uh, we shall be at the loans for that launch. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, looking at not wanting to regret the person you could have been, mm -hmm. You wake up every single morning saying, what can I do today yes. to make myself a better person? Uh, what can I achieve more today? Yeah. So you actually should be your own competition. You should be your own comparison. And the word success does not mean you're comparing yourself to the next person. The word success means you're taking the right steps in the right direction. Mm. Right. Mm. And it will all start by having a goal yeah and i hope you have a goal for yourself as well mm. have you set your targets for the year have you set your goals for the year so you, you 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 evaluate yourself against those goals and where you have reached and you know have you made progress today is it better than what you did uh, you know yesterday so that when you look back you're not like i wish i'd been what I had wished I'd been because I didn't do certain things. Okay, all right. What are the other secrets that you actually get to unlock in this Boundless Success book? Uh, uh, apart from learning uh, different uh, ideas in terms of uh, how to uh, kickstart uh, a business, uh, you're able to learn uh, personal effectiveness, of course. Uh, you're going to learn uh, how to leverage on the power of networks. And that is very key. I talked about people who sometimes say, I don't have a business acumen. So what can you do? Yeah, you get to, s to learn how to leverage on the power of networks. But more so, you're, also go you're going to be able to read uh, different stories, because I capture different stories from different authors. Mm -hmm. Authors who have undergone and uh, overcome uh, you know, s several obstacles to be able to achieve their goals. And that will be key. You'll learn from different, uh, you know, different people, different settings, and how you get to apply that to your life. OK. Yeah. That's interesting. Now, asking this question might uh, sound like a broken record. Mm -hmm. Ugandans have a problem with being able to take their business beyond their, its very first uh, birthday. There are so many challenges that they do encounter. You as a serial entrepreneur, I'm sure you have failed numerous times. How do you handle failure in crafting success? Yeah, interesting. So uh, from failure, actually, indeed, we need to learn what, where, what went wrong, mm. what went wrong. If you fail in one business, you shouldn't give up. Yeah? So you should look at and evaluate mm. uh, you know, where you went wrong. Uh, but for a business to be successful, one of the things that I would advise is record keeping. Record keeping. Keep, keep records. Mm -hmm. yeah? And then take, get some financial advice as well. Mm. I realize that I, I've, I've noticed that most businesses don't get proper financial advice. And uh, you know, they end up uh, getting themselves into uh, very sticky situations that they mm. can't get out of. Okay. Then uh, also keeping up 
uh, you know, keeping abreast with the, the, the environment and your customers' need. Mm -hmm. Yeah, having a business today, uh, you know, where you're not uh, uh, keeping yourself aligned with your customers' uh, changing needs, changing needs you yeah. find yourself actually you're not solving the problem anymore. Mm -hmm. And the most important thing about a business is that are you solving a problem? Uh, solving the problem. Yeah. So okay. that problem could actually change, and for you, you're still you know rigid. So you mm -hmm. need to keep your ear to the ground, help keep yourself close. Help break that. down in very specific terms the bookkeeping dilemma because most people assume bookkeeping stays on aspects like loans the money you get to be able to inject into your business bookkeeping goes down to the very aspect for example if you are a woman who is operating a, a mom and pop shop uh, you're selling a few things and people come from uh, the homesteads and buy them how many cans of a particular product have you sold today that is the bookkeeping you should be talking about now i want you to speak to the average ugandan the ladies before they get into these businesses that require huge offices what bookkeeping is and what exactly they should be able to do okay yeah. thank you so in terms of uh, bookkeeping sometimes people think they've got to start with some complicated kind of mm -hmm. systems mm -hmm. which may not be the case if you're starting small indeed you can start from where you are yeah but bookkeeping is a record indeed of everything that is happening with your business mm -hmm. from the uh, you know the, the money that you're spending you know the money that you're getting in you know making sure you're banking whatever funds actually come through mm -hmm. because there should be a track for those funds That's right. never spend money that you've not banked in a business that is come again never, never spend, spend money, money that, that you, you have, have not banked, banked. So you get a payment for your business. First, bank that money. Now I know I am failing too much at businesses. <laughs> <laughs> and the moment you bank yeah. that money, trust me, mm. you'll think about you 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 think about the expenditure before making it. Ah, okay. Yes. So bank every single money. Then you now think about okay. How am I going to spend this money? But the moment you get, especially, you know, when, when you're running a business, mm. and it's the reason why they fail to save, sometimes when you get the smaller, the smaller payments, you're like, mm. but this one is small, eh? Let me, Let me just use it. Pocket it. Okay. Yeah, and already that is poor record is keeping. Uh, so when uh, it comes to things like trying to get a loan, mm -hmm. and they're telling you what's your turnover, what's you your don't turnover? even know, you start saying, but actually it should be more than this, but, but it's because you're not banking. Mm. So never spend what you have not banked. Though what's the alternative to banking if someone is not really interested in mm. doing the banking or they have had a bad experience with banking? But there are now several huh. banks and uh, <laughs> <laughs> really you, you should I mean the, the, the in all honesty, the bankers have a certain way they treat customers, <gasps> especially when it comes to loans and, you know, mm. we, we are. So we, I, I, they I, end up I, having I, bad blood between mm. them and their clients, and clients are like, you know what? So is there an alternative is basically what I'm asking. There's someone out there who's, like, who has had a bad experience. They would want to find out if there's an alternative. There are several, th there are several alternatives, I mm. guess, on the market. Mm. I don't want to encourage anyone to bank under the bed. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> of banking Lest under the bank. Some people come for <laughs> That's in the evening. Exactly. <laughs> well, cashing in on uh, personal passions and talents yes. in Africa and Uganda in particular, we find ourselves unable to uh, craft our passions and our talents to be able to monetize them. And you, you bet, I bet there are so many young boys and girls, including uh, people in the villages, who have something that they can monetize, but. The trouble is in how do I do the packaging? To who do I go to to enable me achieve this particular goal? Is there some kind of concerted effort from players like you and the associations that you are under to help these people, the young ones, be able to monetize their passions? Because I'm passionate about that particular issue because I've been a victim. You have so much you can do. But somebody tells you, uh, you know, you're a dreamer. Mm -hmm. When you're told you're a dreamer, it kills your ability to come forth and uh, be able to confront anything else. Are you helping anyone? Any girls out there? Yeah. Uh -huh. Tell us about it yes, and yes. how you're doing it. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, so through my training company, Asenify, we actually help a number of people, including youth, yeah, coming up with ideas. You know, they, they have ideas and they want to, to see how to operationalize and make mm -hmm. it a business. Yep. So that is part of the, you know, uh, the services we offer, which is the, you know, the coaching into helping people, uh, you know, uh, get, uh, get these businesses up and running. And uh, when you're interested in something, you should never give up. Mm -hmm. 
have sure. your focus on it, uh, you know, read about it, uh, research about it, and you'll soon know where you're even able to get the help in that line. Uh, I'll give an example of one of the businesses that I just started during lockdown, which was a rabbit, rabbit farming. And it was mm. after getting two uh, rabbits from, um, uh, we'd gone visiting someone who gave us uh, two rabbits. So I watched these two rabbits within this lockdown, they were, you know, <laughs> multiplying and giving rapidly, birth. You know, yeah. Yes, rapidly. I was <laughs> like, okay, so this can also look like a business idea here. So, uh, you know, I just researched about it and just by researching about it, I was able to know. I didn't even know there was an association in Uganda. Oh, yes, I didn't is. know they were organized. Right. A lot of you people know, made yes. money yes. from I know, rabbits. I know yes. a rabbit There's exactly. actually a Kenyan rabbit eating group who got stuck here <laughs> because of the first lockdown. Exactly, uh -huh. I got and to meet him, him, actually. Oh, you got to yes, meet him? Wow. Came, yes, mm -hmm. I got to meet him and all started by... Yeah. So when you have an idea, don't give up. Mm. You know, go research about it. You know, don't let people, uh, you know, talk you down into being crazy and what. Remain crazy because I'm telling you, some of the highest achievers are a little bit crazy. Yeah? I have so don't be normal. Okay. I have snails in my backyard. <laughs> so you can make um, them do I'm thinking, about I'm you. thinking, I'm thinking. <laughs> okay, yeah. so after here, please meet up with Philip on no, a personal no, no, basis no. and they give you, men give you mentorship and coaching. Mm. Well, uh, Philip, in your final words uh, regarding turning and cashing in on your personal pleasures, what's your final say? I want to quote a Chinese uh, saying that the best time uh, to plant trees was 20 uh, years ago. Yeah. The next best time is, is now. now. It is not too late for you to start a business so that you have multiple streams of income and you don't have to rely on just one source of income. Just imagine a table that has got four legs. If one leg breaks, mm -hmm. it will kind of wobble, but it will remain standing. But if you have a table that has got one leg, if that one leg breaks, if that is your source of income, if that one leg breaks, what will happen? The table you will definitely break. break. Yeah, definitely. All right. Well, thank you so much, Philippa Viama. It's been delightful as she's launching this book, Boundless Success, on the 22nd of April 2022. Please pick yourself a copy. Where can people get the copy? At Aristoc. We okay. shall have a copy at Aristoc. Uh, yes, Aristoc. All and right. how much? Uh, 60,000 at a restock, mm -hmm. but uh, directly with me to be 50,000. Okay. All right. Uh, all in all, success is you taking the right steps in the right direction, but you must define what that direction is. If you don't have a definitive direction, then you're going to successfully fail, which is not what we <laughs> want from you. At least we've given you a live example here with the many hats that she's wearing on her. She is still adding on more simply because she has direction, hence her success. Now, you too can be here tomorrow on Today's Woman and as a success story, letting other ladies know that it is possible in today's era. Well, we get to take a short breather. We return, of course, with the poll question. And the poll question was, what can you do to curb the rising commodity prices? What can you do? What can I do? What can the government do? Your community leaders, what can we all do to actually curb these rising commodity prices? Do you stay with us. <laughs>